Today I'm going to teach you step-by-step -step how to make six different DIY door swags for every single holiday using a five gallon paint stir stick. You'll find timestamps below for you so that you can jump ahead to the tutorials you'd like. Welcome to Stillwater's Reef Designs, come on in. Today we're going to make this quick and easy DIY fall door swag using the five gallon paint stir stick method. Welcome to Stillwater's Reef Designs, come on in. Today we're going to make something brand new on the channel, friends. We are going to make a fall door swag using a five gallon paint stir stick. You can actually buy these in bulk from Amazon. They come in a package of 10. For those of you that are new to the channel, welcome, welcome. We're so happy to have you. Stillwater's Wreath Designs is all about wreath and door swag step-by-step -step tutorials on a budget. We upload new tutorials every single week, so I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and create with us. And for all of my returning friends, of course, I'm always so happy that you're back here with me. Thank you for spending time with me once again. All right, let's dive in. Before we start talking through our supplies, go ahead and plug in your hot glue gun so that can be heating up. I'll leave a full materials and tools list for you below in the description of this video so that you can recreate it if you'd like to do so. I'll also be posting this exact door swag in my Etsy shop. If you'd like to just purchase it directly, I'll leave a link for that for you below as well. So these five gallon stir sticks, friends, they are 17 inches in length and about an inch wide. And they've got a little indent here, um, which is intended for the stirring, but it makes for a great spot to add a hanger. So we're going to lay this down here and... We'll go ahead and add some pipe cleaners. That's our very first step. These are just standard 12 inch pipe cleaners. And so I'm just going to take my 12 inch pipe cleaner and make a loop in the center. It kind of looks like an elongated awareness ribbon. And I'm gonna give it two or three twists, like so. And then I'm gonna wrap it right around where this indention is. This will essentially be the back side. And so I'm just gonna give that several tight twists, like so. And then I'll use my small snips here to trim off the excess bit of those pipe cleaners and push those down so that they're flush. So now that we've added our hanging pipe cleaner. Let's go ahead and add our pipe cleaners onto the stir stick, which is how we'll be securing down our deco mesh. And so we're going to take two pipe cleaners at the top, and I'm just gonna run that underneath so that they're essentially the same length, and I'm gonna give it a couple of twists and then point those guys off to the side. We're going to add our second pipe cleaner in the exact same spot, giving it a side twist on the opposite side. So it looks something like this. We're going to come down to the bottom of our stir stick and do that same thing. You're just going to want to come up about an inch to an inch and a half. And again, we'll be adding two. Pointing one off to one side and one off to the other. And you want those pipe cleaners laying right next to one another. And we're going to do that same thing in the middle. You're welcome to measure your stir stick if you'd like. I'm just going to eyeball it. And again, Adding two side by side. One set pointing in one direction and one in the other. So it looks something like this. And then in between each set of two, we're going to add a single pipe cleaner right in the middle of those two. 
And again, I'm just eyeballing it, not looking for perfection. Give it a couple of tight twists and point those guys straight up. And we'll add one more to the next section. Again, just a single pipe cleaner pointing straight up. So essentially we've added nine total pipe cleaners to this paint stir stick. We've added three sets of two for our deco mesh holders. We've added two singles and then on the back side we've added one as a hook. Once you've got those guys secured down, go ahead and take some hot glue and run a couple of beads over every single spot where the front pipe cleaners meet. And that just keeps it from shifting. Doesn't need to be pretty guys, nobody's gonna see it. Once you've got your dollops of glue at all those connecting points, go ahead and sit your paint stir stick off to the side and we'll prep our deco mesh. You'll either want to grab a good pair of scissors and your ruler or tape measure, or in my case, I'll be using my self-healing mat and my rotary cutter. Friends, if you are new to wreath making or door swag making and you've not yet seen a rotary cutter, it's basically um, one of the first tools I would recommend that you add to your wreath making toolbox. And basically it works just like a pizza cutter and it will allow you to cut your deco mesh quickly with nice clean lines. I'll leave a link for this for you below. So for this door swag, we're going to use three different types of 10 inch deco mesh. We've got a solid metallic orange, a burlap, and a solid black. And we've got eight pipe cleaners that we'll be adding deco mesh into. And we're going to add a burlap piece to every single set of ties. So we're going to need eight cuts of the burlap. Let's start with that. And we're going to measure our pieces at 20 inches in length. So with your rotary cutter or your scissors, go ahead and cut out eight 20 inch pieces of your burlap. Now we're going to cut four 20 inch pieces of the orange and four 20 inch pieces of the black. Once you've cut all of your deco mesh pieces, Go ahead and grab your paint stir stick and bring it back to your work area. So our next step is to add our deco mesh pieces into each of our ties here on our paint stir stick. And we're going to add two cruffles to every single set of ties. We're going to add the burlap color to every set of ties. And then we're going to alternate back and forth between the orange and the black. So to make a cruffle, also known as a woodland ruffle, you're going to grab your piece of deco mesh and lay it in your workstation, curl side up. And this is a great technique to use for deco mesh because uh, if you're new to working with deco mesh, you'll soon, soon learn that deco mesh loves to fray. So anything that we can do as creators to help prevent that fray is always ideal. And the cruffle method or the woodland ruffle method tucks away those raw edges to really help prevent exposure and the fray. And so all you're going to do is on one side, let me just add a little weight here, on one side of your piece of deco mesh, again, it's curl side up. You're just gonna curl in that end a couple of times, creating this little tube which tucks away your raw edge. And then uh, to keep things simple, I like to use a chip clip or a clothespin. They just came in a 10 pack from the Dollar Tree. Hold that curl together. Flip your piece of deco mesh around and do the exact same thing at the other end, just a couple of curls. And then you're going to ruffle the rest of your mesh. And to do so, you're gonna use your thumbs as the stationary placeholders. And then with your eight fingers, just crawl that mesh back into your thumbs, all the way to the end of your piece. Remove that clip, and you've just created your first woodland ruffle or cruffle. And so what that really means, friends, you've got a curl on each end and then the ruffle in the middle. 
we're going to come into our paint stir stick and we will just add that cruffle right into our first set of pipe cleaner ties all the way down to the base and give it a couple of tight, tight twists. So we've added our burlap cruffle and now I'm just going to grab orange just because it was closest to me. But remember, we're going to add two cruffles to every single set of ties. So I'm going to curl that end in a couple of times and hold it with my clip. Remember, my mesh was curl side up. Doing the same thing at the opposite end and crawling that mesh into my fingers. I've just made my second cruffle and since the first cruffle, the curls were going in one direction for the second cruffle, we're going to have them go in the opposite direction. So one time we'll lay it like this and then like this, almost like a plus sign. And again, all the way down to the base. Give it a couple of tight, tight twists. And point those guys right back up. Now we'll jump over to the other side. So I'm grabbing a piece of my burlap. I'm going to curl the end in here a couple of times and hold it with my clip. Spin my piece of mesh around and do the same thing to the opposite end. And making my cruffle. I'll come back to my paint stir stick and come over here to the opposite side. Placing that cruffle all the way down to the base, right there in the middle, and giving it a couple of tight, tight twists. Now, since we used orange last time, this time I'll use black. So basically we'll be alternating between the black and orange. Just to give us a nice variety. And I'm going to add that right on top of our burlap mesh all the way down to the base. I'm going to give it two or three tight, tight twists. And I'll fluff out my, my cruffle. So we're going to repeat the same pattern, friends, all the way up our paint stir stick. And so I'm going to kind of alternate back and forth. So, so for the lower set of two, I've got orange and black. So on my next set of two, I'll probably do black and orange and then back to orange and black, just so for some variation. So go ahead and add one burlap cruffle and one alternating of the black and orange cruffle to every single set of ties. And I'll meet you back here. All right, now we've got our paint stir stick fully loaded with our deco mesh. So you should have two woodland ruffles or cruffles added into each set of pipe cleaner ties. And at this point, friends, now that we've added in all of our deco mesh, it is measuring about 24 inches in length and 12 inches in width, probably every bit of eight to 10 inches in depth. Look how stinking cute that is. And this is what it looks like from the back. So adorable. And so now what we're going to do is make a cute bow to add to our very center of our swag. So I'm going to set my swag off to the side. And I've grabbed two 12 inch pipe cleaners. And I'm going to actually marry those together, friends, so that they are longer because our swag has such depth to it. And so to elongate your two pipe cleaners, you're just going to make an X with about an inch or so of each of those pipe cleaners at the top and then starting at one side you're just going to twist 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 like so until you reach the end and then you'll do the exact same thing with that other side perfect and so we've just made a 22 inch length pipe cleaner which I feel like 
um, will be better for our swag. And now we're just going to use a few different types of wired ribbon. And really, guys, you can use any ribbon you'd like as long as it matches and coordinates well with your swag. My personal preference is that I um, usually mix up a two and a half inch width ribbon with a couple of one and a half inch ribbons. You can certainly, um, you know, tweak that and do it as you wish. I just recommend that you always, always use a wired ribbon so that your bit bow will shape the way that you want it to and it's not floppy. So this ribbon, I'm not sure if you can see, but it's got a really cute fuzzy orange edging and then those really cute different textured pumpkins. And so I'm going to measure eight inch tails just using my self-healing mat for measurements. You can also use your ruler. So I've identified eight inches and I'm going to pinch that together in my hand. Give that a twist. I'm going to measure eight inches again. That'll give me a four inch loop. So once you've identified eight inches, just bring that down into your hand. Pinch and gather. Give it a twist. We're going to measure eight inches again. Bring that back into your hand. Like so. Then I'm going to measure that tail at eight inches and cut it off. And I'm just being approximate here, friends. Nobody's going to be measuring your tails. I promise you that. And now I'm going to repeat the same thing, but with my loops going the opposite direction. So I'm going to measure out an eight inch tail. Pinch that and place that in my hand. This time my tail is going the opposite direction. I'm going to give that a pit twist so it's going to be pretty side out. Identify that 8 inch mark and fold it in. Like so. I'm going to give that a twist. Measure out 8 inches again and make my last loop. One more tail coming out at eight inches, approximately. And I'll trim that guy off. So basically we've got four tails and four loops. My left hand will be my holding hand and my right hand will continue to be my working hand. And now I'm going to do the black and white one and a half inch chevron and this time I'm going to make six inch tails. I'll place that in my hand. Give that a twist. I'll make six inch measurements for three inch loops. Give that a twist. Measure it out again. Sorry guys, I know it's sloppy looking here, but the process will work. I'm gonna measure out my tail again to approximately six inches. Cut that off. So for this ribbon, guys, I've got just two loops and two tails instead of four and four. And now I'm gonna repeat the same process with my last ribbon, two loops, two tails at six inches. So a six inch tail, pinching that together, giving that a twist, measuring it out to six inches, folding that guy in. giving it a twist. And for this one, I'm just going to eyeball guys. I'll pull those loops up to make sure they're the same length and they are. And I'll cut that off. So now I've got this 
big old bow stack in my hand. I'm going to take my pipe cleaner, kind of make it into a loose V. And I'm going to wrap that guy right around this ribbon stack. And give it several tight, tight twists. Like so. Now, the thing about bows, guys, look how messy that is. Bows are not pretty when you first make them. They just aren't. So don't panic. Because we're going to fix that. The next thing we need to do is dovetail all of our ribbon tail ends. And to make a dovetail, you're going to fold that ribbon over onto itself. Grab your scissors and come down on the folded side, not the open side, about an inch to an inch and a quarter and cut up diagonally like so. And then when you open it, you've got that nice, pretty dovetail. So let's go ahead and dovetail all of our ribbon tails. All right, now we've got all of our tails trimmed out. And again, it looks like a hot mess, guys. That's okay, we're gonna fix that. So just making sure your tails are pretty side up. Let's add this guy into our swag. And I basically want this to be right in the middle. You could place it at the top if you wanted to, but I'd like to place mine right in the middle. And so the first thing I wanna do is the middle set of pipe cleaners. I'm gonna trim those guys off. I'm not gonna trim off any others because I'm not sure if we're gonna be adding any more in. But since we're doing a bow in the center, let's just go ahead and get rid of these guys. Just trim those guys off and toss them away. And if you need help finding that center set, friends, just flip it over where you can easily identify and that will also show you your center point. And then we're going to, my finger is marking the back so I can kind of find that with my hand. I'm just gonna weave these pipe cleaners one round each side. Now you want it to be nice and taut, but you don't want to pull it so tightly that your bow is, you know, recessed down in. So now that I've identified it, I'm just going to give it a single loose twist to make sure I didn't recede that in too far. And I didn't. And now that I'm happy with that, I'll go ahead and give it a couple two or three secure, not necessarily tight, twists. And then I'm gonna cut off the excess bit of my pipe cleaner. i point those ends inward. And now I'm gonna take my hot glue gun and just give that two or three squeezes to really secure that guy down. And now we'll have to give it a couple of minutes to dry. All right guys, our glue is nice and dry, so let's go ahead and fluff out our bow a little bit. And basically, remember that two and a half inch, we've got four loops and four tails. So you're gonna want those loops and tails kind of going in an X pattern from one another. And to open my loops, I just place my hands in there and kind of stretch them out a little bit. Go ahead and jerk on your loops as you need to. You don't need to be super delicate. So I'm going to just start at the bottom, open up those loops, make sure those tails are also going in a nice X, like so. And then I'll move up to that next layer with our one and a half inch. And remember, we only made two loops of each. So we're going to have our orange going in one direction in the black and white chevron in the other. Open those loops up with our hands. And just work on those tails. You can give your tails some curve by placing them between your two fingers, pulling them up and over. And that's gonna just give them a cute little bump. Just like that. How stinking adorable. We're gonna add a few more ribbon tails into our swag friends. We're only going to use the two one and a half inch ribbon pipes. So I want you to cut four pieces 
of each of the ribbon types at 14 inches in length. So let me show you a quick way to measure here, friends. I just find that 14 inch mark like so, and then I'm gonna fold it over accordion style the number of times for the pieces that I need, in this case, four. So there's two, three, and four. Go ahead and cut your ribbon off. And so now you've got this accordion style folded ribbon. And then fold that guy over. We're gonna dovetail those ends just like we did before. Come down about an inch to an inch and a quarter. Cut up diagonally. We've just separated those ends and dovetailed them all at the same time. Flip that ribbon stack over. Make sure your ends are married up nicely and do that same thing. Just like so. And now what we've done here, guys, we've just measured, cut to separate, and dovetailed all in one motion. Great time saver. Let's do the same thing for the black and white chevron. We need four pieces at 14 inches in length. We're going to add two sets of ribbon tails to the bottom of our swag and two towards the top. So what I want you to do, guys, is take one of each of your ribbon types, make a loose X with them, and then kind of pinch and crawl them in the middle so they look something like this, and then kind of pull them down over your thumb so they're sort of going all in one direction. Come over to your swag and the bottom set of ties, we're going to add one set of tails to each of those pipe cleaners. So place them all the way down to the center. Give those pipe cleaners three or four tight, tight twists. Then trim off your excess bit of pipe cleaner because you won't need those anymore. And then I just take my fingers and kind of curl them back and out of the way. And I'm gonna fluff out those ribbon tails like so. And then we'll do the same thing to the other side. So I'm grabbing one of each ribbon type, making a loose X, like so. I'm gonna scrunch and gather that guy in the middle, give it a pinch, kind of pull all those tails down, and then I'm gonna add them right next to the last set of tails we added in. Placing them down in that pipe cleaner all the way to that base. Give those pipe cleaner ends three or four tight, tight twists. Then trim off that excess bit of pipe cleaner. Curl those ends back and under with your fingers and fluff out those tails. And again, if you run your fingers up and over, it's going to give them a cute little curly bump, just like so. Now I'm going to flip over my swag and we're going to do the same thing to those top two. How stinking cute is this coming along, guys? Adorable, adorable. All right, let's add some embellishments into this cutie. I've grabbed two candy corn picks. These are actually from the Dollar Tree. We'll add one to the top of our swag and one at the bottom. I'll be honest with you guys, I'm not generally fond of Dollar Tree picks. However, I thought these were really cute. Now, because they're Dollar Tree, I wanna make sure they're secure, so I'm just gonna pull on each of those candy corn pieces and make sure they're on there nice and securely. They are on a wire base, so you can spread them out as you wish. And I'm just pulling them apart a little bit just to give them some depth, like so. And I'm gonna trim off the stem. We don't need it, it's probably six inches long. We don't need it that long. I'd say two inches is plenty or three. I'm going to add this guy 
we're going to add it pretty close to the bottom. Kind of nestled between those two ribbon tail stacks, but up just a tad. I've curved this just a little bit so it lays as I want it to. And I'm just going to run about an inch and a half bead of glue right there on that pick and push that guy right in there, like so. And then I'm gonna flip this guy around and we're gonna do the same thing at the top. So I'm gonna trim down my stem. We don't need that guy crazy long. And we'll do the same thing here at the top. Again, just running about an inch and a half or inch and a quarter bead of glue and nestling that candy corn pick right down in there. Just make sure it's got something to grab a hold of. Oh my goodness, you guys, this thing is so stinking cute. So while those are anchoring down, go ahead and grab your small snips and kind of just work your way through your swag and trim off any of those excess cleaners and discard them. We're gonna add a couple of these cute little foam pumpkins into our swag as well. These came in bulk from Hobby Lobby, but you can grab them from nearly anywhere. And we're going to turn them into a pick. Guys, they actually come in a bag, just a mesh bag like this with a variety of different sizes and shapes. But let me show you a little pro tip. Anytime you're working with florals and most florals come on a nice wire stem, guys, I always keep two or three leftover wire bases specifically for making my own picks. And so what you need to do is just trim off three to four inches like so. Identify where you want to add your embellishment. In our case, we're going to add that guy right there. And then based on the angle, take your wire stem bit, poke that guy right into your embellishment, pull it right out, add a little pea-sized dollop of glue, and then poke your wire back in. That'll just help hold it in place, like so. So you want it inside the piece, a good inch or so, and then you want a good inch or two, depending on the depth available to go down into your base. I add a little bit more hot glue, and then you can press that guy right down in. Hold it for about 20 seconds or so, just give it a time to grab. And then we're gonna add one more up here at the top, following that same pro tip method. So I've cut this one a little bit smaller because our pumpkin is smaller. And I want it to sit off to an angle like so. And so I'm going to push it into my pumpkin at an angle, pull it back out, add a pea sized amount of glue, and then press that wire bit right back in there. Be careful of that glue, it's hot. I add a little bit more glue right around that base, and of course, a little bead on that wire pick that we've just made and then nestle that guy right down in and again hold it for about 30 seconds or so to give it a good amount of grab time all right and last but not least I've got one extra candy corn pick and I think I'm gonna go ahead and just trim those guys right off of that pick, leaving about an inch of that stem. And we're just gonna nestle them into our swag. So I think I'm gonna add one extra candy corn to each of the stems at the top and the bottom, and one in the center. So just running a bit of glue right on that stem and a little dollop onto the actual piece of candy corn to anchor this guy down. Like so. 
Oh my goodness, how stinking cute, you guys. I'm going to bend this stem a little bit, like so. It's almost at a 90 degree angle. And then I'm going to run some glue right on that stem and about a dime size amount on the back of that candy corn. I'm going to press that right down into the center of our big bow. And this swag is finished, you guys. How stinking cute did this turn out? I hope you enjoyed creating with me today. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. It helps my little channel to grow. And of course, the full materials list as well as the Etsy link for this particular creation can be found in the description. Thanks, friends. Happy crafting. Today I'm going to teach you step by step how to make this Christmas gnome door swag using the paint stir stick method. Welcome to Stillwater's Wreath Designs. Come on in. Today we're going to make a super cute Christmas gnome door swag on a five gallon paint stir stick. For those of you that are new to the channel, welcome, welcome. We're so happy to have you. Stillwaters is all about DIY step by step wreath and door swag tutorials. We've got new tutorials uploading every single week, so if you like that sort of thing, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and click your bell notification and join us. For all of my friends that have been with me for a while here on the channel, I'm so happy to have you back. I appreciate you all. You guys, I will leave a full materials and tool list for you below in the description of this video so that you can recreate this beauty if you'd like to do so. Of course, I'll also be listing the swag that we make today in my Etsy shop. That link will be below for you as well if you'd like to purchase it directly. All right, guys, before we dive in, go ahead and get your hot glue gun plugged in. We're going to use a five gallon paint stir stick. I actually bought these from Amazon in a pack of 10, I believe. I like the ones from Amazon better than um, hardware stores because they don't have the measurement markings on them and they're just a blank canvas for us to create with. So we're gonna start out by prepping our paint stir stick. By the way, guys, these are 17 inches in length with our standard pipe cleaners, which is what we're going to use to add our deco mesh into our paint stir stick. You will need a total of nine. So the first thing I want you to do is to take your pipe cleaner and make a loop, almost like an awareness ribbon, um, so that those legs are fairly long and then give that a couple of two or three tight twists. And this loop is actually how we or our customers will be able to hang this on our doors. So we're gonna wrap those legs right around this indentation here on the paint stir stick. I'm just gonna give that guy several tight, tight twists to really keep that nice and anchored down. And then I'll cut these leftover bits off with my small wire snips. And then I'll just take my finger and push that down flat, just like that. And so essentially then the side with the loop will be the back of your swag and this is how we can hang it up. And so now we're gonna take two more pipe cleaners right around where we added our hanger pipe cleaner. We're gonna run that underneath, so you want that hanger on the back side. You want those legs of your pipe cleaner to essentially be the same length. And you're going to give it a couple of tight twists off to the side. And then point those guys off to one side or the other. And then we're gonna add one more pipe cleaner right below that and do the exact same thing. However, this time they'll be pointing the opposite way on that opposite side. Just like that. Now we're gonna add two pipe cleaners in a similar fashion at the bottom of our paint stir stick. You just wanna come up about an inch or so from the bottom of that paint stir stick. Thank you. 
then we'll add another pointing in the opposite direction. No need for perfection here, friends. No one's going to see your pipe cleaners. Okay, and now we're going to do the exact same thing in the middle of our paint stir stick. You're welcome to measure that if you feel more comfortable doing so. I'm just going to eyeball it. All right, now that we have all of our doubles attached to our paint stir stick, you should have two pipe cleaners left, and we're going to put a single pipe cleaner between each set of doubles, and we want those right in the middle there and pointing straight up. So go ahead and give it two or three tight, tight twists. Okay, so now we've got all of our pipe cleaners loaded into our paint stir stick. Hopefully your glue gun has had a chance to heat up. So now we're just going to run a couple of stripes of glue right over where those pipe cleaners are attached to our paint stir stick. And that'll just give them some extra stability and keep them from sliding around. Once you've got your dollops of glue added to all of your connecting points where your pipe cleaners meet the paint stir stick, go ahead and set this guy off to the side so it can dry. One thing I like to mention, friends, is that everything I'm teaching you today is just a recipe, so feel free to swap out, you know, colors and the sign options and ribbon options to make it your own. I just grabbed this super cute gray, white, and red Christmas gnome sign. I actually got this from Menards of all places. It's about eight inches in diameter and it's got this twine hook or twine hanger I should say. And I'm going to go ahead and cut that guy off. When we add our sign down into our swag we're going to attach it right in the middle. And so I'm going to grab two, two more white pipe cleaners and I'm gonna staple these pipe cleaners right to the back of my sign. And I basically want it in the middle because I know that my paint stir stick will run right down the middle. Friends, if you don't have a craft stapler, these things are wonderful for stapling down your floral wire, your Chanel stems, your zip ties, whatever, into your signs and embellishments. If you don't have a stapler, you can just use hot glue. You would simply run a pretty good amount of hot glue, about the size of a quarter, over each pipe cleaner, and then take a two inch piece of scrap ribbon and place right on top over the glue. And over that pipe cleaner, that'll work just as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and use my stapler and then just for extra measure I'm going to run a little bitty dollop of glue just a stripe right over that and you guys I'll leave a link for this crafting stapler below in the description of this video it's basically um, you know heavier duty than a desktop stapler but lighter duty uh, compared to a garage or you know toolbox stapler it's pretty handy all right, we're gonna set our sign off to, side, off to the side so that it too can be drying. So while our sign and our paint stir stick glue dollops are drying, we're gonna go ahead and prep our deco mesh. I'm gonna be using two colors today. I'm gonna to use this gray and the white. Again, they're 10 inches in width. And we're going to add two cruffles to every single set of pipe cleaner ties on our paint stir stick and we've got eight ties so we're going to need 16 pieces in total I'm going to cut eight pieces of the white and eight pieces of the gray at 20 inches in length you can either use a self-healing mat like you see here along with a rotary cutter which by the way if you're new to wreath making the rotary cutter is a great tool to add to your toolbox it's pretty inexpensive and it lets you cut your deco mesh really quickly and with nice clean lines i'll leave a link for this below as well if you don't have a rotary cutter and self-healing mat for measuring just grab your ruler and a good pair of scissors so we're just going to measure out eight pieces of the gray 
and eight pieces of the white at 20 inches in length and then I'll meet you back here. Once you have all of your deco mesh pieces cut, go ahead and bring your paint stir stick back to your work area and go ahead and grab some sort of a clip or a clothespin that will help you as we make our cruffles. And so remember we have got three sets of two and two singles for a total of eight pipe cleaners on our paint stir stick and we're going to add two cruffles to every single pipe cleaner all the way up our paint stir stick. So if you're not familiar with deco mesh, deco mesh loves to fray. So anything that we can do as a creator to help reduce that fray is always ideal. The cruffle method, also known as a woodland ruffle, is a great way to help reduce and prevent that fray. Go ahead and grab a piece of deco mesh and lay it in your work area, curl side up. I'm gonna place my rotary cutter in the middle just as a little weight here and to keep it from rolling up. And what I want you to do on one end, as you can see it likes to curl, go ahead and roll that end in two or three times to make this little tube or a curl. And what that does is tuck away that cut edge or that raw edge to really help prevent the fray. And then just use your clip to secure it. Then spin your deco mesh piece around and do the exact same thing on the opposite end. And then we're going to ruffle the middle. So take your thumbs and place it down on that curl that you made and then we'll use our eight fingers to walk this deco mesh, just scrunching and gathering right back into our hand. And then we'll remove that clip and pinch that guy in the middle and we've just made a cruffle, and cruffle means curl on the end and ruffle in the middle. We're gonna come over to our paint stir stick and add that to our first set of pipe cleaners all the way down to the base. We're gonna give it a tight twist. You don't need to get too carried away. We're gonna add another piece in just a minute. Right down at the base. And now we're going to take a white piece of deco mesh or the secondary color that you're using and make our next curl so you've got it in your work area curl side up I'm gonna roll that end in two or three times to tuck away that raw edge and secure it with my clip I'll spin that guy around do the exact same thing two or three curls and now I'm going to scrunch and gather that mesh into my hand to make my cruffle. I'm gonna remove my clip and pinch this guy in the middle. We've just made our second cruffle and we're gonna put this right on top of this gray cruffle that we just added. So I'm gonna gently untwist that pipe cleaner and add that guy right on top. Now, Cinch your pipe cleaner down really tight and give that two or three tight, tight twists. I'm gonna point them up just to get them out of the way. And we've just added our first two pieces of deco mesh into our paint stir stick. I'm gonna repeat the exact same thing to the set of pipe cleaners on the right. And guys, because I'm using two colors of deco mesh, I'm gonna follow the same pattern. So. On my set of doubles, I'm going to put the gray on the bottom and the white on the top. And then for my single pipe cleaners, I'll put the white on the bottom and the gray on the top. So let's speed ahead and add two cruffles to every single set of pipe cleaners, both the doubles and the singles. And I'll meet you back here. All right. I've Got all of my deco mesh pieces fully loaded into my paint stir stick and look at what great coverage that has already given our paint. Remember the paint stir stick um, started out at 17 inches in length and now it's about 22 inches in length and about 11 or 12 inches wide. So let me show you what it looks like from the back here. You can see how this method would also make a great 
table centerpiece. So if you didn't want to add a sign, you could load this guy up with embellishments and set it right in the middle of your dining room table or your fireplace mantle, and it would be a great holiday addition. So now we're going to add some ribbon tails into each one of our pipe cleaners. Let me scoot that swag base off to the side. And remember, our Christmas gnome sign is in grays, blacks, and reds. And so I've grabbed two one and a half inch ribbons, the red and white polka dot, and then the black and white glitter stripe. And we're going to add one ribbon tail of each into every single one of our pipe cleaners. So we're going to need eight pieces of each ribbon type cut at 10 inches. So let me show you an easy way to quickly cut your ribbon, friends. So just identify that 10 inch mark on your piece of ribbon. Just measure that out. And then just mark it with your finger. Doesn't have to be perfect. No one's going to be measuring your tails. And then fold that ribbon accordion style the number of times, or the number of pieces, I should say, that you need. We need eight. I'm gonna run out of this roll, guys, so I'm not gonna get the full eight right now, but you'll get the idea. Once you have your total number of pieces, just grab your scissors, cut off that excess bit of ribbon. So now your ribbon is cut accordion style, and depending on how you would like your ends trimmed, they could either be angle cut or dovetailed. I think I'm gonna angle cut for, for this swag. Just take your scissors, and cut those ends off while it's cut accordion style, like so. Make sure they're married up at the ends and give them another cut. And just like that, you have measured and trimmed the ends of all of your ribbon tails. So go ahead and cut eight pieces of each of your ribbon types, and I'll meet you back here. All right, now I have all of my ribbon tails cut at 10 inches in length and I've angle cut my ends. And so now we're going to add one ribbon tail of each into every single pipe cleaner on our swag. So to add tails, guys, you're just gonna grab ribbon type number one, ribbon type number two, make a loose X. Give that a pinch in the middle. Come to any set of pipe cleaners Place that ribbon tail X all the way down to the base of those pipe cleaners and give them two or three tight, tight twists. Just like that. We'll fluff out our ribbon tails once we're finished here, but go ahead and add your ribbon tails to every single set of pipe cleaners and then I'll meet you back here. Now that we've got all of our ribbon tails added into our swag, just look how stinking cute this guy is coming along. Absolutely adorable. So what I want you to do is find that center set of double pipe cleaners. It's hard to find from the front, guys, so just flip your paint stir stick over and find that set of doubles, and then those ribbon tails Instead of shaping them as an X, go ahead and point them all outward so it's almost like a double V. And the reason for that is because we're going to add our sign in a short bit here in the center, and so those guys will get buried underneath our sign, and we want everybody to be able to see those tails, so we'll just point them all outwards so that they're visible, just like so. Let's go ahead and move forward with our next step. So our next step, guys, is going to be to add some deco mesh tubing bows to each of our pipe cleaners. I'm going to use red and black. We'll add one deco mesh bow to every single pipe cleaner, and I'm just going to alternate back and forth between those colors. And so we're going to need four pieces of black and four pieces of red. I actually got this um, from the Dollar Tree. So if you're new to working with deco mesh tubing, guys, it, it's basically just like the regular deco mesh 
um, that we've used for our cruffles. Um, it's basically the width of a pencil, if you can see that. And it's just a little tube of deco mesh. Now, one thing you don't want to do when you're working with deco mesh, you don't want to pull it flat. As you can see, it will lose its shape. You want to let it just lay organically in your hands as you're working with it. So go ahead and cut four pieces of the black and four pieces of the red at 18 inches in length. And remember not to pull it taut. When you cut it, just let it lay organically. And I'll meet you back here. Once you've got your deco mesh tubing pieces cut, you should have eight in total. Set them off to the side and bring your swag back into your workstation area. And we're going to add one deco mesh bow to every single pipe cleaner. To make a deco mesh bow, remember, um, don't pull it tautly, just let it lay organically. You're just going to lay a piece in your hand and then make a figure eight. Just like so, and pinch it in the middle. You want an inch or so tail on each side so they don't come undone. Come back down into your pipe cleaners. Place that figure eight bow all the way down to the base of those pipe cleaners. Give those pipe cleaners two or three tight, tight twists so that it's nice and secure, and then you can go ahead and trim off that excess remaining bit of pipe cleaner because we won't be adding anything else into those pipe cleaners. And then I just take my fingers and tuck that little nub under so it's out of the way. And I'm gonna go back and forth alternating with my colors. So I'm gonna go black, red, black, red, black, and just sprinkle them throughout. So go ahead and add one deco mesh figure eight bow to every single set of pipe cleaners. Trim off those pipe cleaner ends and tuck your tails away. And then I'll meet you back here. You guys, how stinking cute is this guy coming along? Just take a look at all those details with our ribbon tails and our deco mesh tubing bows. It's a nice full piece. So cute. And now it's time to add our sign in. So I'm gonna bring my sign over and go ahead and just give each of these pipe cleaners a couple of twists, just to make sure at no point do they slide around. And we're going to add this right to the middle of our swag. And if you need um, help finding that middle, you can just take a look at where we moved all of our tails pointing outwards here in the middle. You can also flip your stir stick over and find that middle set of doubles. And we're gonna just take these pipe cleaners and wrap them right around the spine of our swag. And then we're gonna give them some tight twists. Give yourself some grace while you're adding your sign in, guys. It's a little bit tricky to get around all that foil. I'm just making a couple of loose twists to make sure my guy is still where I want, it to, want him to be, and he is. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for my lower set of ties. So just take your time, work your pipe cleaners through your deco mesh layers, and wrap it around that spine. Once you're happy with your placement of your sign, give each of those pipe cleaners several more tight, tight twists. Trim off those ends. And then just point that nub down over with your finger. And then you're gonna flip your paint stir stick back over. And you'll wanna take just a couple of minutes to untuck any of your ribbon tails, your deco mesh tubing bows, anything that got hidden away during the process of adding your sign, just pull them back out into visibility. How adorable, guys. This is turning out to be so stinking cute. 
And now it's time for the fun part. We're going to add some embellishments. I'm going to add a couple of snowflakes and then I've got some pom-poms we'll be adding in as well. So I'm going to add one snowflake up above my sign and one below. Those tails are far too long. So I'm going to grab my heavy duty snips because these are actually wire and I'm going to trim them down so that that tail is just oh three inches or so on both of my snowflakes here. And then I'm just going to dry place. I just kind of want to run it underneath like so. And then one underneath, kind of at a diagonal. And then I'm going to glue them down in and commit. So I'm just going to pull that out. I'm going to run a bead of glue right on that snowflake here. You don't really want to do it over your over your swag in case you have any drips. Just like that. I'm going to spin that around and get my top one nestled in. Again, just run a good solid bead of glue right on your stem. And shove that guy in. The great thing about Deco Mesh, it really grabs a hold of everything and just glues down nicely. That is so adorable. Last but not least, I have this box of mini pom-poms. Let me show you what they look like. They're so cute. Aren't those adorable? They're probably oh, three quarters to an inch in diameter. Lots of glittery metallic ribbon sticking off of them. And I'm just gonna sprinkle these um, evenly between the red and the white at basically the center of every single bow all the way around my swag. So I'll just add a pea-sized dollop of glue. And I'm gonna go back and forth between the colors. I'll put a red pom-pom on top of the black deco mesh tubing bows and a white one on top of the red. And again, just a teeny, in this case, half a pea-sized amount of glue like so and place that right down on top of where our deco mesh bows, where we trim down all of our pipe cleaners, just like that. So let's speed ahead and get these guys added in. And I think I'm going to add a red one right in the center of both of my snowflakes. And that is it, you guys. We have finished our first Christmas door swag for the season. I hope you enjoyed creating with me. If you did, please give this tutorial a thumbs up. It really helps my little channel to grow. Thanks for spending time with me today. Happy crafting. Today I'm going to teach you step-by-step -step how to make this farmhouse-themed Valentine's door swag using the paint stir stick method. Welcome to Stillwater's Reef Designs. Come on in. Hey friends, it's Nikki here with Stillwater's Reef Designs. How are you? Come on in. I've received lots of messages asking if we could create some more Valentine door swags on the five gallon paint stir stick. And so that's what we'll be making today. Friends, if you are new here to the channel, welcome, welcome. We're so happy to have you. Stillwater's Wreath Designs is all about DIY step-by-step -step wreath and door swag tutorials. We've got new tutorials uploading every single week. So if you like that sort of thing, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and join us. And for my friends who have been here on the channel for a while, thank you for coming back. I so appreciate you. 
You'll find a full materials and supplies list for you below in the description of this video. So if you'd like to recreate this beauty, you can sure do so. Of course, if you'd rather just purchase today's door swag, I'll leave my Etsy link for you below as well. So we're going to use a standard five gallon paint stir stick. I actually buy these in bulk from Amazon. I prefer to get them from Amazon, uh, although you can also pick them up at basically any hardware store. Um, but when you buy them from Amazon, they don't have the ruler markings. It's just a blank canvas for you. And so I prefer to grab them from Amazon. Just for reference, the five gallon paint stir stick is about 17 inches in length. You're going to need six standard pipe cleaners. You'll just want to grab some pipe cleaners that are color coordinated with your design. And the first thing we're going to do is take pipe cleaner number one, and there's a little bit of an indent here near the top of the paint stir stick. And we're just going to wrap this pipe cleaner right around that indentation. We're going to give it two or three tight, tight twists. And after you've made those tight twists, then create an X at the top of that pipe cleaner and then just twist those guys around each other. And what we're doing here, guys, is making a loop so that we or our customers can then hang this from their door. So we've just created the door hanger. Now we're going to flip that guy over and we're going to be adding five single pipe cleaners down the base of our paint stir stick. So we're going to add the first one right at the top, directly underneath that hanger that we just added. You're just going to want to center that and give it two or three tight, tight twists. Just like that. And then you can kind of leave them in a U shape here, a V. Then we're going to come down to the bottom about an inch or so up from the bottom there and we're going to add our next pipe cleaner you're welcome to measure this out if you would like to friends i just eyeball it so again it's a couple inches from the bottom or about an inch and a half from the bottom i've given it a couple of tight twists and my pipe cleaners are pointing straight up we're going to add our next pipe cleaner to the middle of our paint stir stick. And again, give it a couple, two or three tight, tight twists and point those guys up. And now we'll add our last two in between our first three. So we'll add one in the middle here and one in the middle here. Once you've got all of your pipe cleaners added, go ahead and take your hot glue gun and just run a couple of stripes of glue right over those pipe cleaners. That's gonna help to anchor those guys down so they don't slide anywhere. Our door swag today is going to have a little bit of a cute farmhouse country vibe to it. We're going to use two different colors of 10 inch deco mesh, the metallic red and the burlap colored. Remember, we've got five pipe cleaners on our door swag, and each pipe cleaner is going to get two pieces of deco mesh. So what we're going to do at this point is get our deco mesh pieces cut. We're going to cut five pieces of the burlap or tan colored and five pieces of the metallic red at 24 inches in length. So you can use your ruler and scissors to cut that mesh if that's what you've got handy. If you're new to wreath making, I would definitely recommend getting a self-healing mat. That's what you see in the background here. This particular mat is 36 inches by 24. They come in a variety of sizes and you can cut directly on this mat without harming your workstation. And then you would also use a rotary cutter, which basically works like a mini pizza cutter and it lets you cut your deco mesh quickly with nice clean lines. And to use it, you basically just roll out that deco mesh to your desired length, in our case, 24 inches. Grab that cutter and just roll it straight up like a pizza cutter. I'll leave a link for these below for you. So go ahead and cut five pieces of the red, five pieces of the tan at 24 inches in length, and I'll meet you back here. Once you've got your 10 deco mesh pieces cut, go ahead and grab your paint stir stick 
and bring it back to your work area. By now your glue should be nice and dry. And I would recommend that you also grab a chip clip or a clothespin for this next step. We're going to go ahead and add our deco mesh pieces into the paint stir stick and we're going to be adding cruffles into our paint stir stick. If you're new to working with deco mesh, friends, it loves to fray. So anything that we can do as creators to help reduce that fray is always ideal. And the cruffle method is a great way to do that. And so we're going to grab a single piece of deco mesh. It doesn't matter what color. I'm going to start with a burlap color and I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up. And you're going to lay your single piece of deco mesh in front of you, curl side up. I always like to add a weight in the middle of my mesh so that it doesn't curl in on itself. And at the one end, you're going to curl that mesh in three times to tuck away that raw edge and prevent that fray. Then grab your clip, pinch that guy down in the middle just to hold it in place, and spin that mesh piece around. And then we're going to curl the other end three times to tuck away that raw edge. We'll remove that weight. And now we're just gonna scrunch and gather this mesh. Forgive my finger here, friends. I'm nursing a, a cut. All the way to the end of the piece of that mesh. Release that clip. And you've just created a cruffle. And basically what a cruffle is, is a curl on each end and then a ruffle in the middle, hence the cruffle. And we're going to come to our paint stir stick. You can start at the top or bottom, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna start here at the bottom and we're going to add that cruffle in and so for this bottom cruffle let me just spin my pipe cleaners I'm going to have that cruffle going horizontally so I've placed it all the way down to the base of the V of my pipe cleaners and I'm going to give it a single super tight twist so it's going to look just like that and we're going to alternate colors. So since I started with tan, I'm going to go tan, red, tan, red, tan. And we're going to do one layer at a time. So now I'll grab a piece of red deco mesh. I'm going to bring that to my work area. Lay something in the middle of that mesh to keep it from rolling up on itself. It's curl side up. I'm going to curl my end here three times to tuck away that mesh. Pinch that with my clip, spin that guy around. And now I'm going to curl the other end three times to tuck away that raw edge. And then scrunch and gather that mesh back into my hand. Just like that. Then we'll release that clip. We'll come back to our paint stir stick. And since we went horizontally with our first piece, We'll go vertically with the next. So I'm gonna lay that down in the center, all the way down to the base of those pipe cleaners, and give them one or two super tight twists, just like that. So now let's go ahead and add in our last three pieces, alternating colors and directions, and then I'll meet you back here. So I've just finished adding my first layer of deco mesh. So I've got one curl in every single set of pipe cleaners. I've alternated colors and directions. And so we've got a good base going, but it's still looking pretty thin. So we're going to add a second layer of deco mesh into our pipe cleaners. And we're going to go the opposite direction and in the opposite colors. So we'll do one together and then we'll speed ahead. I'm gonna start at the bottom again. Last time I used burlap <clears throat> colored in that bottom set of pipe cleaners going horizontally. So this time I'm going to add a red piece going vertically. So we'll be going opposite colors in opposite directions to really make it nice and full. So I've grabbed a piece of red. It's curl side up in my workstation. I'm going to curl those ends in three times. Pitch that with my clip, spin that guy around, curl my opposite end three times, and I'm going to ruffle that mesh in the middle here.
all the way to the end and I'll release my clip. We'll pinch that guy in the middle. We'll come back to our pipe cleaner. It's a little bit trickier on the second layer, friends, because you're fighting the mesh on your first layer. So just give yourself some grace. So I'm gonna add that right on top, this time going vertically. And I'm gonna give my pipe cleaners two super duper tight twists, just like that. So now that pipe cleaner's got two pieces of deco mesh. So we're going to follow that same process all the way up our paint stir stick, making sure that you alternate colors and direction. So for instance, this next set of pipe cleaners, I had used red on the first layer going vertically. So now I'm going to add a burlap colored cruffle going horizontally. And we'll repeat that process until we've added our second piece to every single set of pipe cleaners. And then I'll meet you back here. Now that we've added our second layer of deco mesh cruffles, look how nice and full this swag is becoming. So remember it started out as 17 inches in length and now it's measuring about 24 inches in length and about 11 inches in width. So we've definitely given this guy some amazing fullness. So for this particular door swag, friends, I really wanted to do something with some really relaxing, simple, yet beautiful farmhouse vibes. And so we're not going to add any signs or attachments. We're going to build this beauty out with lots of ribbon by way of bows and ribbon tails. And then we're gonna add a little bit of greenery in just to really complete that look. So we're gonna set this guy off to the side. And what we're going to do is make our bougie bow. So remember, we've got our five pipe cleaner ties. We're gonna add a bougie bow to the center. And then we're going to add ribbon tail clusters to the upper two pipe cleaners and the lower two. So I've actually grabbed five different types of wired ribbon. It doesn't matter what width you use, friends, just make sure that it's wired. That's what really helps maintain a, a beautiful shape for your bow and your tails. I like to mix it up between two and a half inch wide ribbon and one and a half inch wide ribbon. Totally up to you. So we're going to start out with the two two and a half inch wide ribbons. So go ahead and grab a good pair of scissors and your ruler or just use your self-healing mat for measurement purposes. So we're gonna start with a two and a half inch black and white check. I'm gonna grab my ruler just so that you can see what we're doing here. I'm gonna go ahead and just pull out a couple of feet so it's easy to work with. You're also going to want to have a pipe cleaner on hand, just a standard length that matches your ribbon choice and fold that guy into a loose V and have him sitting nearby because we'll be using this to secure our bow once we get that finished. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure out approximately a six and a half inch tail. And guys, not looking for perfection here. No one's gonna be measuring. So I've just pinched that in my hand. And then I want a five inch loop. And so to get a five inch loop, just measure out to the 10 inch mark. Give that a pinch, fold that back into your hand. And we're gonna make our second loop also at 10 inches to give us that five inch loop once we're finished. Give that a good pinch and fold that back into your hand. And now we'll measure out our tail at six and a half inches and trim off our excess bit of ribbon. We're just going to be making two loops and two tails of every ribbon type. So I'm gonna let my left hand be my holding hand and my right hand be my working hand. We're gonna move on to our next ribbon. Same measurements. So we're gonna measure a six and a half inch tail and give that a pinch. Give it a twist. Let's roll some of that out here. A hard twist, you always want that pretty sign up. We're gonna lay that right on top of the last ribbon that we used. And now I don't need to measure, friends. I can just eyeball and use my previous loops as my guide. If you're not comfortable doing that, just go ahead and use your ruler. Once you have them in your hand, you can always marry them up on 
onto one another like that to make sure that they land in the same place. And then a six and a half inch tail. And we'll cut that guy off. Next, we're going to use this one and a half inch striped ribbon. Super cute. We're going to keep a six inch tail from here on out. So I'm going to find that six inch mark, give that a pinch, lay that in my hand right on top of my previous. I'm going to give that ribbon a hard twist. You always want that pretty side up. And I want my loops about a half an inch shorter. So I'm just going to eyeball. They're about a half an inch shorter. I'm going to give that a hard twist. Make one more loop, also a half an inch shorter. We'll make sure they meet at the same spot, and they do. And then we're gonna cut off our six inch tail. Next, we're gonna use our one and a half inch burlap with black trim. We'll be doing that six inch tail. Give that a pinch, lay it in our hand. Give that a nice hard twist. We're gonna be making those loops approximately the same size as our previous loops. Give it a hard twist. And make sure those loops are the same, and they are. And measure out that tail at six inches and trim that guy off. Last but not least, we've got our heart ribbon. So we'll find that six inch to six and a half inch spot. It's a really stiff ribbon, so I'm gonna put that underneath my hand. Give that a really hard twist. And we're gonna make those loops just about a quarter of an inch smaller than our previous loops. So between four and four and a half inch loops, Remember, you can always marry them up onto one another to make sure they're the right length. And then we'll cut off a six inch tail. So now we're gonna grab that pipe cleaner we had pulled out earlier and wrap that around our bow stack here. And you want the open end on the back side. Forgive my process here, friends, it's a little clunky since I'm nursing a cut. And you're going to wrap that around and just really pull that guy as absolutely as tight as you can get it. Tight, tight, tight. Once you've got that nice and tight, just twist those pipe cleaners two or three times just to really secure that guy in. And now I'm going to do a rough fluff of my bow or my ribbon stack. And so I just take my pipe cleaners and put it between a couple of my fingers to hold it in place. And so I like to start at the bottom. So if I've got a tail on the left, I want to loop on the right and then on the other side. So it'll go loop, loop, tail, tail. And you're basically forming an X. So if you can see that I've got an X pattern with the loops and an X pattern with those tails. And then with my red ribbon, we'll go the opposite way. We'll have those loops right above those tails and then the tail above the loop and we'll repeat that process on the bottom and not looking for perfection guys we're going to fluff this guy again once we get it into our door swag and i'm just repeating that process the loops and tails back and forth in alternating directions So once you've got that rough fluff, we're gonna add that guy into our door swag. So I'm gonna take my scissors and just trim off that excess bit of pipe cleaner that we use to secure our bow. I'm also going to take my scissors and trim off those excess bits of pipe cleaners from that middle set of pipe cleaners. Because our bow stack is so thick for this particular bow, we're gonna use a 20 gauge Floral wire stem, I'm just gonna fold that guy into a loose V. I'm gonna wrap that right around the center of our bow stack and flip that guy upside down. And then I'm gonna give it just a single tight twist here, just so it doesn't slide around. 
then we're going to come back into our swag and run those floral wire stems right beside that central pipe cleaner that we just trimmed off. And then once you get it to the back side, just go ahead and give that guy three or four tight twists. Make sure you're happy with that bow placement. You want to tighten that at about 80% tension. You want it nice and secure, but you don't want to tie it so tightly that it recedes too far into your swag. So we've just trimmed off those excess bits of floral wire. I'm going to pinch those together and then just kind of point them back down into that pipe cleaner so that it's not a sharp edge. Now we can flip this guy over and we're going to take a couple minutes and do that final fluff on our bow. So just follow that same recipe I shared with you at the beginning, starting at the bottom, making an X with each layer of ribbon and alternate between those tails and loops and then I'll meet you back here. So once you've got that bow fluffed out, go ahead and angle cut or dovetail those ends. I'm gonna go ahead and dovetail. To dovetail, you're just gonna fold that ribbon tail in half and then on the folded side, not the open side, come down about three quarters of an inch and cut up diagonally to that corner to give you that nice, pretty V. How stinking cute. All right, let's set this guy off to the side and work on some tails. Now we're going to add our tail clusters to our very top set of pipe cleaners and our very bottom. And so we're going to cut two strips because we'll be using one piece for each set of pipe cleaners. So go ahead and cut two pieces of every single ribbon at 12 inches in length. Dovetail those ends and I'll meet you back here. I've got all of my ribbon strips cut and my ends dovetailed, and so now we're going to make our tail clusters. We're gonna start with a two and a half inch and work our way up in that same pattern that we used for our bow. So I'm gonna grab my first ribbon, which is the two and a half inch buffalo checked. I'm just gonna eyeball it to find that center and give it a pinch. You're welcome to measure if that's easier for you. We'll do the second two and a half inch ribbon, and I'm gonna lay that right on top. I'm not gonna worry about spreading those out yet. We'll use our third ribbon. Laying that guy on top. Our fourth ribbon. And our fifth ribbon. This one's a really stiff, stiff ribbon. So I'm just laying those all in my hand, just like that. Just keep those guys out of the way. I'm going to come to my door swag to that very bottom set of pipe cleaners and I'm going to lay that stack right down into the base of those pipe cleaners and give them two or three super duper tight twists. And then I'm going to use my needle nose pliers and trim the excess bits of pipe cleaner off. We don't need those and toss them away. And now we can fluff out our ribbon tails. I'm just gonna make an X pattern just like I did before guys with those two and a half inch ribbons. I'm starting from the bottom as you can see. And then I'll do the same thing with that next layer. And then for that middle heart ribbon, I'm just gonna kinda let it go whimsically. So once I've got that X pattern made, I'm gonna take my fingers starting at the bottom and pull those ribbons between my fingers kind of up and over, which is going to give them this cute little bump. That's why we like to use wired ribbon, guys, because it holds its shape. It's got good memory. All right, now that we've got our tail cluster added to the lower, set of pipe cleaners on our swag. We're gonna repeat that same process for the upper most set of pipe cleaners on our swag. So let's speed ahead and we'll get those added in. 
How stinking cute is this coming along, guys? Oh my goodness. Now we've got two more sets of tails to make for the second and fourth pipe cleaners that are buried between our other ribbon bundles. And so I want you to choose your two favorite ribbons that are the one and a half inch width. I'm going to use these two and we're going to make two pieces at 10 inches in length of each of those two favorites. And we're gonna dovetail those ends and then I'll meet you back here. Once you've got your ribbon tails trimmed, we're gonna use one of each. And we're gonna put one on top of the other. Doesn't matter which one's first. You're gonna eyeball to find that center and just give it a pinch in your fingers. And then come into that set of pipe cleaners. Add those tails down in and give those pipe cleaners two or three super tight twists and then go ahead and trim off that excess bit with your small snips or scissors. And then once you get those ends trimmed, just go ahead and pull those tails into a narrow X. Run your fingers over them if you would like to give them that little bit of a curvature, just like that. And then we're gonna do that same process to that last set of pipe cleaners, which is nestled between the first and the third. Look how stinking cute that is, guys. No sign. We just let the beauty and simplicity of our ribbon do the talking. And what a beautiful statement piece. We've got one more step. I've got a one and a half inch foam glitter heart that I got from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna give that a couple of squirts of glue on the back and just nestle it in whimsically here between our bows in that center point. So just a couple of dollops of hot glue, being mindful not to touch that guy. Now that would smart. We're gonna tuck that in there and then let that be while it dries. And then we're gonna add just a few pieces of greenery. This is a greenery vine bush from Hobby Lobby. Friends, if you are new to wreath making, you will soon discover that florals are nearly always going to be the most expensive part of wreath making. So just a quick pro tip for you, Hobby Lobby has all of their florals on sale for at least 40% off every other week. So when it's time to buy florals, make sure you're mindful of that sale. And I really love this viney bush because you get a ton of pieces out of it it's really um, a heavy duty piece and so it's it withstands the elements pretty well and so what I do is you can see there's just like little fingerlings all along this vine and I cut them off right at the base so they're a couple of inches long and look like that and then I just kind of sprinkle them throughout my design so I'm going to cut off six of them or so, we can always cut more if we need. And I'm definitely going to add one to the center of each of my ribbon tail bundles. And so I'm just gonna run a half an inch bead of glue right over that little tail there and just stick that right at the center. I'm gonna hold it for about 15 seconds to give it some time to grab. Friends, I do recommend using Gorilla Glue sticks, doesn't matter what gun you really use, but I have found over the years that Gorilla Glue sticks really withstand the heat and the cold outside, and they don't come undone. So we've added that first piece in. I'm gonna come in here to my, my double ri ribbon tail bundle here that we just added. I've added a little plop of glue. I'm just gonna whittle my way in there and stick that guy in there as well. Spin this around and we're going to add one at the center of our upper ribbon tail bundles. I always like to lean those right up against where we've cut off that pipe cleaner because those pipe cleaner nubs are a really good adherence for our greenery. Now I'm gonna add one on either side of that middle bougie bow that we added. 
just kind of whimsically, guys. You can add as many or as few of these as you wish. This is just a recipe. I just think that greenery gives it a little bit more of a farmhouse feel. And this beauty is finished. Oh my goodness, how stinking cute. Thank you for spending time creating with me today. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my little channel to grow. Thanks for spending time with me today, friends. Happy crafting. Today I'm going to teach you step-by-step -step how to make this St. Patrick's Day door swag using the paint stir stick method. Welcome to Stillwater's Reef Designs. Come on in. Before we get started, let me just take a quick minute to welcome anyone new here to the channel. Stillwater's Reef Designs is all about step-by-step -step DIY reef and door swag tutorials. We have new tutorials uploading every single week, so if you like that sort of thing, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and join us. And for those of you that have been here on the channel for a while, thank you for coming back. I so appreciate you. You'll find a full materials list for you below in the description of this video in case you'd like to recreate this beauty. Of course, if you'd rather just purchase today's creation, you'll find my Etsy shop link below as well. All right, let's dive in. Go ahead and plug in your hot glue gun. We're going to build today's door swag on a five gallon paint stir stick. I actually grabbed these from Amazon. You can get them at hardware stores as well. However, I typically like to grab them from Amazon because they come to you like a blank canvas, just like this. If you get them from the hardware store, they're going to have measurements on there, which isn't so attractive. And the first thing we need to do is to load our paint stir stick with pipe cleaners. These are just standard 12 inch pipe cleaners and you're going to need nine of them. The first thing we're going to do is create our door hanger. And at the top of the paint stir stick, about three inches or so down, you'll see there's an indentation. That is the perfect place for your door hanger. So just take a pipe cleaner, wrap it right around that center point, give it a couple of tight, tight twists, and then just make an X pattern near the top. And we're going to wrap this pipe cleaner around itself on each side. So now you've got a nice two inch loop to hang your door swag. Go ahead and flip that guy back over. And we're going to add two more pipe cleaners towards the top. So I'm gonna wrap this right underneath where we attach that door hanger and give it a couple of tight twists and point those guys off to one side. And we're going to add another hanger and do the same thing going on the opposite side. So you're just adding two or three tight twists and then laying those pipe cleaners off to the side. I'm gonna come down to the bottom of our paint stir stick up about an inch or so and do that exact same thing. And now we're going to do the exact same thing in the center of the upper and the lower sets of pipe cleaners. I'm just gonna eyeball it, but feel free to measure if you would prefer. All right, now that we've added our three sets of double pipe cleaners. We'll add two more pipe cleaners and these will be singles. You're going to add one between the upper and the middle and one between the middle and the lower. So just right in the center. Wrap that guy around tight. Give it a couple of tight twists. And point those guys straight up. You can see I'm kind of making that into a U-shaped and you'll see why here in just a minute. And all right, now we have all of our pipe cleaners loaded into our paint stir stick. And so now we're gonna grab our hot glue gun and just run a couple of stripes over those pipe cleaners so that they can really anchor down and we don't have to worry about them sliding as we create our door swag. Once you've got your glue dollops added, go ahead and sit this guy off to the side to dry. And while that's drying, we'll go ahead and prepare our deco mesh. We're going to use 
a metallic white and a metallic green 10 inch rolls of deco mesh for today's design. And to cut the mesh, you're going to want to grab a ruler and a good pair of scissors or your rotary cutter and self healing mat. If you're new to wreath making friends, I always recommend that one of the first um, tools that you grab for yourself is the self healing mat. Let me scooch those guys. What you see in the background here is a self healing mat. They come in a variety of different sizes. This particular mat is 36 inches by 24 and it's got measurement grids all along the mat and it allows you to cut materials directly on the mat without harming your workstation or the sharp edges of your tools. And then I would also recommend that you grab a rotary cutter. A rotary cutter basically looks like a mini pizza cutter and it lets you cut your deco mesh quickly and with nice clean lines. I'll leave links for these for you below. So remember we've got eight pipe cleaners on our door swag and we're going to add one green and one white piece to each pipe cleaner. So we're going to need eight cuts of the green and eight cuts of the white measured at 22 inches. So with your self healing mat and rotary cutter or your scissors, just roll out that mesh, find that 22 inch mark and cut. So go ahead and cut eight pieces of each color at 22 inches in length and I'll meet you back here. Once you've got all of your deco mesh pieces cut, go ahead and grab your paint stir stick and bring that back to your work area. I would also recommend you grab a chip clip or a clothespin for this next step, just makes it a little bit easier. And we're going to add two deco mesh cruffles to every single pipe cleaner on our paint stir stick. One green and one white going in opposite directions. So. Let's do a couple together and then we'll speed ahead. To make a cruffle, you're going to grab your piece of deco mesh and lay that in your work area, curl side up. I like to place something heavy on it just to keep it from rolling around. And, and then at one end, you're going to roll that end in three times. If you are new to deco mesh, you will soon learn that deco mesh loves to fray, so anything that we can do to tuck away those raw edges is always ideal. So I've rolled this end in three times and then I've just clipped it with my clothespin here to keep that guy secure. And then I'm going to spin it around and then I'll roll the opposite end in three times to tuck away that raw edge. Remove my weight and now I'm going to press down on that curl that we just made with my thumbs to hold it stationary and then I'll use my fingers to crawl this mesh back into my hand. Once I reach the end here I'll remove that clip and pinch that guy in the center and you've just made a cruffle and what that really means friends is a curl on each end and a ruffle in the middle hence the cruffle. We're going to add a green cruffle to every single set of doubles. And it doesn't matter if that cruffle is horizontal or vertical. So I've just opened those pipe cleaners into a wide V, taken that cruffle and placed it all the way down to the base of the V of that pipe cleaner. And then I gave that pipe cleaner two super duper tight twists. Now I'm gonna add another green cruffle on the opposite side. So I'm laying my piece of deco mesh in my work area curl side up. I'm going to place something in the middle that's a little bit heavy to hold that guy down. I'm going to roll my end in three times to tuck away that raw edge and then secure it with my clip. I'll then spin that guy around and I'm going to roll that opposite end three times. I'll remove that weight and scrunch and gather that mesh back into my hand. I'm gonna remove that clip, pinch that cruffle that we've just made in the middle. I'm gonna come back to my paint stir stick and open those pipe cleaners into a wide V, place that cruffle all the way down to the base of that V, and then I'm gonna give these pipe cleaners two or three super duper tight twists and point them off to the side. So since we've added green to our first row of pipe cleaners, we'll add white to the next. 
So I'm just gonna make my cruffle. Now because our green cruffles are going vertically, we're gonna add our white cruffle in horizontally. So we're gonna follow the same method. Let me just move, scooch my pipe cleaner here. And again, we're gonna place this guy horizontally all the way down to the base of the V of those pipe cleaners and give them a couple of tight, tight twists. So we've got our two vertical cruffles in our double set of pipe cleaners. We've added a white horizontally to our single and we're gonna repeat that for the next two. So we'll put two green, one white, and two green. Go ahead and add those cruffles in and then I'll meet you back here. Okay, now we've added our first layer of cruffles into our paint stir stick and now it's time to add our second layer. And everything that we do on this second layer, friends, is gonna be the opposite. So when we start at the bottom, our first layer, we added two green cruffles vertically. So now we'll add two white cruffles right on top of those horizontally. For the white cruffles that we added to the singles horizontally, we'll now add a green going vertically. So for every set of pipe cleaners, you're going to use the opposite color of deco mesh for your cruffle, and you're going to have that cruffle going in the opposite direction. Let's do these first three together, and then we'll speed ahead. So I've made my cruffle off camera here. I'm gonna add this white one right on top of the green. So we're doing opposite. So instead of green, it's white. Instead of vertical, it's going to be horizontal. And we'll do the same thing on the opposite side. And again, it's gonna go right on top of that green horizontally. So we're gonna add a single green cruffle going vertical. Remember, as we add the second layer, for every pipe cleaner, you're gonna use the opposite color and have your cruffle going in the opposite direction. Remember to give those pipe cleaners some tight, tight twists. So that's what it should look like here on this bottom half. Go ahead and finish those remaining pipe cleaners, making sure that each color is opposite and the direction is opposite as the first layer, and I'll meet you back here. Okay, we've got our two deco mesh cruffles added to every single set of pipe cleaners, and just look how cute and full that base is. So let me tell you real quickly, guys, that this currently is about 24 inches in length and 12 inches or so wide and probably 8 to 10 inches deep. This would be a great table centerpiece as well. So the next step is to add in some bows. We're going to add a bougie bow to the center and then we'll sprinkle some ribbon tails throughout. So let's make our bougie bow first. So go ahead and grab a good pair of scissors and a white pipe cleaner. Let me show you the ribbons that I've chosen for this beauty. I've got a two and a half inch black and white, a two and a half inch glitter shamrock, a one and a half inch shamrock with some black trim, and a solid one and a half inch green glitter. So those are the four ribbons that we'll be using. You can use as many or as few as you would like to make this bow. Just make sure that whatever ribbon you choose is wired. We're gonna start out with the black and white. That just gives it some nice contrast. So I'm just gonna unroll some of my ribbon and we're going to make this bow by hand. I'm going to lay a standard ruler here just for some quick measurements. I want six inch tail, so I'm gonna identify that six inch mark. And then I'm just going to pinch that ribbon to create that tail. And then I'm going to give that ribbon a hard twist. You always want your ribbon to be pretty side out. And for this bow, I want four inch loops. So that means I need to measure out an eight inch piece. I'm gonna give that a pinch, bring that back into my hand, which just created my four inch loop. I'm gonna give that a twist underneath my thumb. So my left hand here, as you've noticed, is my holding hand. My right hand is my working hand. We're gonna measure out to that eight inches again. And guys, not looking for perfection. No one's going to be measuring. Give that a pinch and secure that guy underneath my thumb to 
make sure my loops are the same. I'm just going to marry them on top of one another, and they are. And we're going to cut our six inch tail. We'll set that off to the side and move on to ribbon number two, which is the two and a half inch shamrock. I'm going to use the exact same measurements for this. So we're going to identify that six inch mark for our tail. Give it a little pinch and gather. And place that underneath my thumb. I'm going to give that a hard twist. Just a quick FYI, guys, anytime you have glitter appliques on your ribbon, it is stiff. Now, you're welcome to continue to measure. I'm just going to eyeball it and make sure it's the same length as that black and white loop, maybe just about a quarter inch smaller. I'm going to measure this tail with the black and white tail and cut that guy off. I decided to grab some black and white chevron one and a half inch just to give it a little bit more sass. And I'm going to continue to eyeball. We're going to make those loops about a half an inch smaller than the previous. So I'm just eyeballing. But again, guys, no one's going to be measuring, I promise. Then just marry those loops up to make sure they meet in the same spot. And trim off your tail keeping my tails all approximately the same length. Now we'll use the solid green glitter. We're going to make those loops basically the same size as that black and white chevron. Always marry those loops up and make sure they meet in approximately the same spot. And now for our final ribbon, we'll make those tails a tad shorter, probably an inch or so. And we're going to make a single loop that's only, oh, an inch and a half to two inches. And I'll show you why in just a minute. Once you've got your bow stack finished, grab your pipe cleaner, just kind of fold it into a loose V, and then we're going to wrap this guy right around the center of our bow. And you definitely want to give that two or three super duper tight twist, really as tight as you can get it. And then what I like to do, friends, is just put those pipe cleaners between two fingers and do a rough fluff of my bow. So all I'm doing is pulling these tails so that they're going in the right direction. That's it. Just pulling those tails down. We haven't fluffed out our loops at all, but we are gonna take our scissors and go ahead and trim our tails. You can angle cut or dovetail. I'm just gonna angle trim mine. And I always tell, like to tell folks, make sure that you don't over trim. You can always take more off, but you can't put it back on. So. Just be cautious as you trim your ends. I'm going to bring that swag back to our work area and get this guy added down in. Now it's a little hard to find those pipe cleaners when your beauty is full of deco mesh, so you can flip it over to find that center point. Now we're going to secure our bow right there in the center. So I'm just eyeballing it, flipping this guy over. And I actually added the longer pipe cleaners around my bow because this swag is so dense. Once you're back there on the back, just go ahead and give it a couple of tight twists. I want to make sure that's <clears throat> still where I want it to be before we commit. Yep, I'm happy with that placement. So I'm gonna come back to the back, give it a few more tight twists to really secure that bow in place. And then I'm gonna cut off the remaining bits of those pipe cleaners and tuck those edges under. 
Now that we've done that, we can fluff out our bow. So to fluff out our bow, I always like to start in the bottom and I'm just gonna make an X with those two, two and a half inch. So I've got the black going one way and the shamrock going the other. And they're going in opposite directions. I'm just opening these loops up with my hands. I'm gonna follow that same pattern with the one and a half inch, making the X. And then that last ribbon that we added where we just made the one inch loop, you're just gonna turn that into what I call a button, just a single center loop, which kind of identifies then that center point of our bow. I'm not gonna do anything with my tails until the end, but we do have our bow roughly fluffed out and it's looking super stinking cute. So now we need to prepare our ribbon tails. So that leaves us three sets of pipe cleaner ties on the bottom and on the top. So we're going to need six tails of each ribbon type and we're only going to make tails with the one and a half inch ribbon. We're going to make our ribbon tails 11 inches long. So to make your tails quick and easily, you're going to take your ribbon, identify that 11 inch mark, and then you're gonna fold this ribbon accordion style the total number of times that you need for pieces, in our case six. So there's two, three, four, five, and six. Once you've got that total number of folds, go ahead and trim off your ribbon. Now, what I want you to do, while your ribbon is still folded accordion style, know the strength of your scissors, guys, don't overcut. I'm going to pull up three pieces, one, two, three, and I'm gonna cut diagonally. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the second half of my stack here. Then we'll spin this guy around and repeat that same process. And just like that, you have measured six tails and trim those ends all in one fail swoop. So it's a quick and easy way to make your ribbon tails. Go ahead and follow the same process. You'll need six tails of all three of the one and a half inch ribbon types, and then I'll meet you back here. All right, guys, once you've got your ribbon tails cut, go ahead and bring your swag back to your work area. And we're going to add three ribbon tails to those six remaining pipe cleaners. And so to add your tails, you're gonna stack one of each of the ribbon types right on top of each other in whatever order you prefer. I'm gonna go one, two, and three. Then you can either eyeball to find that center point or you can fold that stack in half. And remember guys, no one's gonna be measuring. Once you've identified that center, just give it a pinch and a pleat. You'll have to be a little rough with it. It's a little bit more tricky when you've got three tails instead of two. You're gonna fold those into a loose V over your thumb. And then you're gonna to come to any open set of pipe cleaners, open them into a wide V, place that ribbon tail set all the way down to the base and give those pipe cleaners two or three super duper tight twists. Then you'll take your scissors or your small snips and just trim off those excess bits of pipe cleaners. You aren't gonna add anything else in with them. And then we're just gonna fluff out those tails. Let me just tuck that pipe cleaner nub out of the way. And so to fluff them out, I'm just gonna pull them back into that V shape and spread them open a little bit so that everybody can see those beautiful tails. Just like that. And you can run your finger over those ribbons and that's gonna give them a little bit of a curvature. How stinking cute. Let's do one more set together and then we'll speed ahead. So just layer your three ribbons on top of one another. And then either fold that ribbon stack in half to find the center point or just eyeball it. Give that a pinch in the middle, 
fold that into a loose V over your thumb. Come to your next pipe cleaner set. All the way down to the base of those pipe cleaners and give those guys two or three super tight twists. Trim off those excess bits of pipe cleaners with your scissors or small snips and fluff out those tails. Now we're going to repeat that same process on the top part of our swag and then I'll meet you back here. And the last step is to add in, we're going to add in six glitter shamrock attachments. So I've got this set of six. I think I grabbed them from, gosh I can't remember if it was the Dollar Tree or Hobby Lobby, but we're going to use all six. Those shamrocks, just for reference, are about two inches in diameter. And they're on little wooden skewers, but guys, they just slide right off there. So we're going to pop all of those shamrocks right off of those skewers. Now I would recommend you keep these skewers. They are great when you need to make your own picks for attachments. So I like to throw them in a mason jar and keep them off to the side. And we're basically going to add one glitter shamrock everywhere we've attached those tails down at random angles. So I'm just gonna look at that, determine which side looks better, if any. Give the back of that shamrock a couple of full squirts of hot glue. And we'll be careful not to touch that. And then right where we anchored those tails down, where those bits of pipe cleaner remain, we're just gonna add them right there for all six of these ribbon tail bundles. Just gonna give them a good press for about 15 seconds or so, and then move on to the next. Look how cute this is with those little shamrock glitter attachments. And the last thing we have to do, friends, is just run our fingers over these ribbon tails to give them some height and some curvature and determine if we need to trim them. So I'm just running them over my fingers one at a time, pulling them up towards the ceiling as I do it. I think those ribbon tails are perfect. I don't see any that are too long or that need trim, so I'm gonna leave them just as they are. And this beauty is finished. Guys, I sure hope you enjoyed creating with me today. If you did, be sure to give this tutorial a thumbs up. It really helps my little channel to grow. Thanks for spending time with me today, friends. Happy crafting. Today I'm going to teach you step by step how to make this DIY patriotic door swag using a 5 gallon paint stir stick. Welcome to Stillwater's Reef Designs, come on in. For today's design you'll need one 5 gallon paint stir stick, six standard pipe cleaners, three types of 10 inch deco mesh, your wired ribbon of choice, some red glitter curls, a good pair of scissors, and your hot glue gun. Let me just take a quick minute to welcome anyone new here to the Stillwaters channel. We are all about step-by-step -step DIY wreath and door swag tutorials. You'll find new tutorials uploading to the channel every single week. For those of you that have been here on the channel with me for a while, I so appreciate you coming back. You'll find a full materials list for you below in the description of this video as well as my Etsy shop link. So if you'd rather just purchase today's design, you'll find that link for you below as well. Okay, let's dive in. The first thing we need to do is build out this five gallon paint stir stick. They are 17 inches in length and about an inch and a half wide. And you're going to need six standard pipe cleaners. The first thing we're going to do is right at the top of this paint stir stick, there's a small indentation about three inches down, and we're going to anchor our first pipe cleaner right around that indentation. So I've just wrapped that around, tightened it about three times, and I'm going to create a loop that's about two, and a, two to two and a half inches in diameter, and then just wrap this pipe cleaner around itself. And this is actually going to make the loop 
that you or your customers can utilize to hang this from your front door. There we go. So it should look something like this. That's actually going to be the back side of your design. So we'll flip this over and now we're going to add the other five pipe cleaners. You'll add one right below where we added the hanger and we're just going to place that in the center and give it three or four tight, tight twists. We're going to form that into a U and point those ends straight up. They don't have to be perfectly even if you can see that there, friends, no worries. We'll move on to our next pipe cleaner. So we're going to come to the bottom of that paint stir stick about an inch and a half above where that paint stir stick ends. And again, wrap that around two or three times tightly. Form those ends into a U and point them up to the ceiling. Next, we'll add our third pipe cleaner, which is essentially right in the middle of those first pipe cleaners that we added. You're welcome to measure if that is more comfortable for you. Again, a couple of tight, tight twists. Form that into a narrow U and point those ends up to the ceiling. And then the last two pipe cleaners, we'll be adding one in between the first and second pipe cleaner approximately here. And then our last one between pipe cleaners two and three in the center. Once you've got all of your pipe cleaners added into the paint stir stick, you should have one on the back side for your hanging loop and then five on the front side that are essentially evenly spaced apart. And then we're going to take our hot glue gun and just run a couple of stripes of glue right on top of that pipe cleaner and our paint stir stick to just make sure these guys don't slide around. Once you've added all those dollops of glue, go ahead and set your paint stir stick off to the side to dry and we'll prep our deco mesh. So I've grabbed three different rolls of 10 inch deco mesh and let me just take a second to pause here and just remind you that what we're making today is a recipe. Use the colors that you wish, the theme that you wish. Feel free to really make this your own. I thought we would go ahead and make a farmhouse style or country themed patriotic door swag. So I've got a 10 inch roll of burlap with red, white, and blue striping, a 10 inch solid red metallic, and a 10 inch solid blue metallic. We're going to start out with the burlap striped deco mesh. And for this next part, guys, you can either use a good pair of scissors and a ruler to measure your deco mesh pieces, or if you're new to wreath making, I would strongly recommend that you grab a rotary cutter from Amazon and add that to your toolkit along with the self-healing mat that you see here in the background. This just lets you easily measure your mesh and ribbon and cut it smoothly and efficiently with nice clean lines. And remember we added five pipe cleaners to the top of our paint stir stick. So we're going to need five pieces of this deco mesh cut at 24 inches in length. So either with your scissors and ruler or your self healing mat and rotary cutter, go ahead and cut those five pieces at 24 inches in length and I'll meet you back here. Once you've got those first five pieces of deco mesh cut, go ahead and bring your paint stir stick back to your work area. We'll set that off to the side just a bit and we're going to add one deco mesh piece into each set of pipe cleaners for this first step and we're going to make cruffles with our deco mesh. If you're new to working with deco mesh, deco mesh loves to fray so anything that we can do as creators to help reduce that fray is always ideal and the cruffle method is great for that. So that's the method we'll be using today. I would recommend that you have a chip clip or a clothespin handy for this next step. It just makes it a little bit easier. We're going to take a single piece of deco mesh. We're going to bring that to our work area curl side up. I like to lay something in the middle of my deco mesh piece just so it doesn't curl up on me. We're going to come to one end of our deco mesh and we're going to roll that end in two or three times and what that does is tuck away that raw edge to help reduce the fray. Then we're going to pinch that with our clip. We'll spin our piece around. 
we'll roll that opposite end in two or three times as well to tuck away that raw edge. Remove your weight. And then we're going to scrunch the remaining bits of our mesh. So all we're going to do is press down on that curl with our thumbs, use our remaining eight fingers to just scrunch and gather or walk that deco mesh back into your hand. And then we'll release that clip and you've just made a cruffle. And so really what a cruffle is, guys, is a curl on each end and a ruffle in the middle, hence the cruffle. You're going to come into your paint stir stick and we're just going to start at the top. Take that cruffle and so the factory edge or the ruffled top is pointing up. We're gonna place that right down to the center of our pipe cleaners all the way down to the base. And give that two or three tight, tight twists. And then we'll point those pipe cleaners back up. So we've just added our first cruffle. Let's go ahead and make our second cruffle. Release that clip, pinch that cruffle in the middle. This time we're going to go horizontally. So we'll have that factory edge on the side of our paint stir stick. We're gonna add that cruffle all the way to the base. Give those pipe cleaners two or three tight, tight twists. We'll make our third cruffle. We'll release that clip, pinch that in the middle. This time we'll go vertically again so that ruffled factory edge is pointing up. We're gonna place that all the way down to the base of our next set of pipe cleaners. And you guessed it, give them a couple of tight, tight twists. We'll move on to our fourth cruffle. Remove that clip, pinch our cruffle in the middle. This time the factory edge will go horizontally. We're essentially going back and forth in a pattern. We've added that all the way to the base of our next set of pipe cleaners, giving them a couple of tight, tight twists. And it's time to make our last cruffle. Release that clip, pinch that cruffle in the middle. We're gonna add that to our last set of pipe cleaners all the way down to the base. Give those pipe cleaners two or three tight, tight twists. And we've just added our last cruffle into our swag. So this is what it's looking like once we've completed our first layer. That coverage is looking pretty good, but we're gonna make that a little bit more dense in coverage. So we're going to set our base off to the side, and then you're going to grab your solid metallic red and solid metallic blue 10 inch deco mesh, and we're going to add one curl of each of the colors into every set of pipe cleaner ties on our paint stir stick. So we're going to need five pieces of the blue and five pieces of the red. We're going to cut those pieces at 10 inches in length. So go ahead and cut five pieces of each at 10 inches in length, and I'll meet you back here. Once you've got five pieces of the red and five pieces of the blue cut, go ahead and grab your paint stir stick swag and bring it back to your work area and grab that clip. And we're going to make one curl of each color to add into all of our pipe cleaners. So to make a curl, you're just going to grab a single piece of deco mesh, lay it in your work area curl side up, and roll that piece of mesh into a cylindrical tube. Just like that. And so it's about an inch to an inch and a half in diameter in the center. And then of course it flares at the ends. You'll just grab your clip, pinch that curl in the middle, grab your second color, bring it to your work area, and lay it down curl side up. Roll that piece into a cylindrical tube. And then we'll grab our red curl. We're just gonna make a simple sloppy X with those two curls. We'll come into our pipe cleaners, 
we're going to add that deco mesh curl x all the way to the base of the pipe cleaners right on top of our cruffle all the way down to the base and give those pipe cleaners a couple of tight tight twists so we've just added our first two curls so go ahead and add one red and one blue curl to every single set of pipe cleaner ties on your swag and I'll meet you back here. Okay, we've added one blue and one red curl to every single set of pipe cleaners on our swag and just look how cute this is. And you guys, something to keep in mind is this also makes a great centerpiece for your dining room table or your fireplace mantle. Super cute and versatile. Okay, so now what we're going to do is add a nice bow to the center of our swag and then some ribbon tails to the remaining pipe cleaner ties. So let's start out with our bow. Let me show you the ribbon I've grabbed here, guys. You can grab the ribbon of your choice. I just recommend getting a mixture of two and a half and one and a half inch wide ribbon. So I've got a two and a half inch patriotic and burlap. I've got a solid navy one and a half. And then I've got some glittered red and glittered white one and a half. Doesn't matter what you choose or how you pair them as long as they're wired. So this is going to be a super easy bow. It's one of my favorite bow recipes um, for beginners and it's really very beautiful. So we're gonna take our two and a half inch wired ribbon and we're going to cut two pieces at 24 inches in length. Once I measure that first piece, I just use it then as my guide for my next piece. And you guys, this doesn't have to be perfect. I promise no one's gonna be measuring your bows. Then we're going to cut two strips of the solid navy at 22 inches in length. And we'll cut two strips of the red one and a half inch glitter ribbon, also at 22 inches in length. And then I've got a single piece of one and a half inch ribbon that's white with some cute stars that is 12 inches in length. So as long as you've got seven ribbon strips in total, you can mix and match them how you wish. And so what I'm gonna do at this point is angle trim my ends to all the ribbon strips. To angle trim, you're just going to come down about an inch on one side and cut up diagonally to the other side. You can also dovetail, of course, if that's your preference. So let's speed ahead and get these ends all trimmed. And then we'll make our bow. Before we get started on our bow, go ahead and grab a standard pipe cleaner that matches somewhat in color to your ribbon and just fold that pipe cleaner into a loose V and set it off to the side. Okay, so to make this bow, you're going to grab your first strip of ribbon. I always start with a two and a half inch. You're just gonna fold that in half. Again, not looking for perfection. Then, at the halfway point and just back a little bit closer to the closed end, you're just gonna pinch and gather that piece just like that and take that bottom loop and just give it a hard twist under your fingers because this is going to become your ribbon tail and you want that pretty side up. So it basically looks like an awareness ribbon. So my left hand is going to be my holding hand and my right hand, my working hand. We'll grab our next piece of two and a half inch. We're gonna fold that piece in half. This time we want the closed end to be the opposite end. So here's our closed end, end facing to the left. So our next one will face to the right. Just pinching and gathering in the center. I'm gonna lay that right on top of that first ribbon. And we're gonna twist or flip that ribbon tail so it's pretty side up, just like that. So now we're gonna grab a navy blue piece and do the same thing, fold it in half. And we're going to continue to flip flop which ends the tails are at versus the loops. So we want loops, tails, loops, tails as we build our bow.
And for this last piece that's only 12 inches, we're going to fold that in half and just place that right on the top. We'll twist that tail later. It's too short to do so now. Grab your pipe cleaner and wrap that right around the middle of your bow stack and flip that around. And then as tight as you can, cinch that pipe cleaner up tight, tight, tight and give it three or four tight twists. I'm going to take my scissors then and cut off that excess bit of pipe cleaner. We don't need that. Go ahead and grab your swag base and bring it back to your work area. We're going to add our bow to the center set of pipe cleaners. If you struggle to identify that center set, guys, just flip it over and you want that middle pipe cleaner and you can just flip it around. We're going to place that bow stack right down in the middle of that pipe cleaner and give it a couple of twists. You want to anchor it down nicely, but don't squish it down so much it recedes and disappears into your swag. Once you have that added, we're going to fluff our bow. I like to do that from the side. So I'm going to pull those tails, those two and a half inch tails on the bottom into basically an X pattern. And then I'm going to open up my loops right where they're at. You can certainly fluff your bow how you wish. It just takes a little time, doesn't matter how long you've been making bows, so give yourself some grace and spend some time fluffing. Once you've got that bow fluffed out, we're going to make some ribbon tails for our swag, and we're going to need four pieces of the red, four pieces of the white, and four pieces of the blue. Cut it 10 inches in length and then angle trim or dovetail those ends and then I'll meet you back here. Once you've got all of your ribbon strips cut, go ahead and bring them back to your work area. We're going to add one of each of the colors into each set of pipe cleaners. So I'm just going to go red, white, and blue. Just crisscross them like, like that. And we're just going to kind of pinch that in the middle a little bit. We'll come to our first set of pipe cleaners, add that ribbon tail bundle all the way down to the base of those pipe cleaners, give them two or three tight, tight twists, and I'm just going to use my small snips and trim off the excess bits of those pipe cleaners and curl them back and out of the way. And then I'll fluff out my ribbon tails, and all I'm doing is making sure they're right side up and I'm going to run my finger over each tail just to give it a little bit of a curve. Just like that. So we're going to add three ribbon tails to our remaining pipe cleaner tie. You had two below the bow we just added and two above. Let's get those added in. You guys, how stinking cute is this door swag coming together? So you can see how this has great coverage and would also make a great centerpiece, as I had mentioned earlier. Okay, we've got one more step for this beauty. This is just a pick of red glittery curls that I grabbed from Hobby Lobby. And we're going to add some of these curls into our swag for that last step. Make sure your hot glue gun is plugged in in case it isn't already. I'm just going to trim off that step. These are actually my Work Pro heavy duty cutters. Those are great to save your wrist when you're working with thicker, thicker embellishments or florals. So if you can see, these are kind of sectioned off. And I'm going to take those Work Pro cutters and separate this stem into sections. Those curls get tangled up with each other. You might have to uncurl them. See what I mean? So we'll just work that out. And we're just going to then have some, some little picks here. And by separating that out into sections, that actually gave us three picks. And so we're going to add one at the top, basically near that top set of pipe cleaners. 
And so what I'm going to do is on the back side of that pick, I'm going to run a full squeeze or two, or dollop as I call them, of hot glue. And then I'm going to nestle that right down in near the center of that ribbon tail bunch. And I'm going to hold that for about 10 seconds to give it a good amount of time to grab. And we're going to add one to the very bottom set of pipe cleaners as well. So again, on the back side of that stem, I'm going to give it two full squeezes of glue and then we'll nestle that in right where that bottom set of ribbon tails was added in. And we're going to give it a 10 second hold to give it time to grab. And then I trimmed down that last sprig into just individual pieces. And what I'm going to do, oops, what I'm going to do is just add a dollop of glue towards the bottom of those and just kind of sprinkle them throughout the remainder of our swag. And that is it. How stinking cute is that? And what a simple craft. I sure hope you enjoyed creating with me today. If you did, be sure to give this tutorial a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks friends, happy crafting. Today I'm going to teach you step by step how to make this super easy summer door swag using the 5 gallon paint stir stick method. You'll find a full materials list for you below in the description of this video so that you can recreate this beauty. Of course you'll also find a link to my Etsy shop if you'd rather just purchase today's design. Welcome to Stillwater's Reef Designs, come on in! Let me just take a quick moment to welcome anyone new here to the channel. Stillwater's Wreath Designs is all about step-by-step -step DIY wreath and door swag tutorials. We've got new tutorials uploading every single week, so if you like that sort of thing, I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button and join us. Okay, let's dive in. I'm going to be making a flamingo summer-themed door swag on a five gallon paint stir stick for a dear friend of mine. So I thought I'd bring you along with me while I create this. Okay, the first thing we need to do is prep our five gallon paint stir stick. And you'll see that there's an indentation here towards the top. This will be the top of our swag. And so the first thing we're going to do is just take a pipe cleaner and we're going to place that right there in that indentation fairly evenly. We're going to give this pipe cleaner two or three tight, tight twists. And then we're going to overlap this pipe cleaner so that the circle is a couple of inches in length. And we're going to wrap this pipe cleaner around itself down both sides. And essentially this is going to turn into the door hanger so that we or our customers can easily hang this beauty on our front door. So it should look something like this. Let me zoom in here for you. And now you've got a perfect door hanger. This will be the back side of our swag, of course. So we're going to flip this guy over and we're going to be using in total, including our hanging pipe cleaner, nine pipe cleaners. You'll just want to grab pipe cleaners that are similar in color choices to your swag. And these are just standard 12 inch length. So we're going to come right underneath our door hanger pipe cleaner. We're going to keep these ends fairly even and we're going to tie them or twist them I should say two or three times tightly off to one side. We're going to grab another pipe cleaner and do the same exact thing. This time it will point to the other side. Now we're going to come to the bottom of our paint stir stick about an inch or so above this bottom spot. And we're going to add two pipe cleaners at the bottom as well. Perfect. Now we're just going to eyeball the space between our top set of pipe cleaners and our bottom to find that middle. If you're more comfortable, you can certainly measure if that's easier for you. And we're going to add two more pipe cleaners right here in the middle. 
Okay, we've got two more pipe cleaners to add in. We're going to add one in between the top and the middle and one in between the middle and the bottom. Again, just eyeballing to find that center. And this time our pipe cleaners are going to be pointed straight up. Okay, we've now got our paint stir stick fully loaded with our pipe cleaners. It should look something like this. I've got my hot glue gun plugged in and ready to go. And so now I'm just going to add a couple of stripes of glue right over those pipe cleaners to make sure that they don't slide around and they're nice and anchored down. Once you've got those dollops of glue added to all those pipe cleaners, go ahead and set your paint stir stick off to the side to dry and we'll prep our deco mesh. We're going to use three different types of 10 inch deco mesh. This is going to be a flamingo themed door swag. So I've got a solid 10 inch white, a solid 10 inch hot pink with some metallic ribboning and a lighter pink that's actually checkered. Let me show that to you, it's super stinking cute. And we're going to add two pieces of mesh to every single set of pipe cleaners or ties on our swag. Every single set of ties will get one white and then we're gonna alternate back and forth between the two shades of pink. So let's start by cutting the white mesh. You guys, you can use a ruler and a good pair of scissors if that's what you have handy. If you're new to wreath and swag making, I highly recommend that you invest in a self-healing mat. It's got all the measurements that you need both horizontally and vertically. It also protects your work surface and also a rotary cutter. The rotary cutter will allow you to cut your mesh quickly with nice clean lines. I'll leave links for those for you below. We're going to cut all of our deco mesh pieces at 20 inches in length. And so we're going to need eight 20 inch pieces of the white and four 20 inch pieces of each of the two shades of hot pink. So go ahead and cut your deco mesh and I'll meet you back here. You guys, I appreciate you all so much for being with me here on the channel. I'm actually going to do a giveaway today and send out some five gallon paint stir sticks to one of my subscribers. So please comment the word giveaway below for your chance to win. I'll draw that on Mother's Day. Okay, I've got all of my deco mesh pieces cut and ready to go. So I've grabbed my paint stir stick. That hot glue is nice and dry. I'm also going to grab a clothespin. You can also use a chip clip. That'll come in handy for this next step. And we are going to add two cruffles to every single set of ties on the entire stir stick swag. If you're new to wreath making, you will soon discover that Deco Mesh loves to fray. So anything that we can do as creators to help reduce that fray is always ideal. And the cruffle method is great for that. So remember, we're going to add one white cruffle to every single set of ties and one pink cruffle to every single set of ties. And we'll alternate back and forth between the bright pink and the light pink. So I've grabbed a piece of deco mesh. Just gonna use this rotary cutter as a weight. I'm laying this down in my workstation curl side up. And on the end, I'm going to curl that end in two or three times. And what that does is help tuck away that raw edge to reduce the fray. And then I'm just going to use my clip to hold that in place. I've spun my piece around. I'm going to do the same thing to the opposite end and curl that in a couple, two or three times. Then I'm going to take my thumbs and press down on that curl to hold it in place and use my other eight fingers to walk the mesh back into my hand until I reach the end. We'll release that clip. And we've just made our first cruffle. So what a cruffle really is, guys, is curls on the end, ruffle in the middle, hence the cruffle. We'll start at the lower level of our swag. I've just opened up a set of ties or pipe cleaners into a wide V. I'm going to take that cruffle and pre press it all the way down to the base. 
And then I'm gonna give my pipe cleaners a couple of super tight twists to lock that guy in place. So that's cruffle number one. Let's move on to the second cruffle. I've grabbed a piece of deco mesh. I'm gonna lay it in my workstation curl side up. I'll curl in the end two or three times to tuck away that raw edge and then secure it with my clip. We'll spin that guy around and do the same thing on the opposite end, curling that in, end in a couple of times. Then we'll scrunch and gather that mesh, release our clip, pinch that in the middle. We're gonna come back to the very same spot where we added our first cruffle, and we're going to add our next cruffle, and we want them to go in opposite directions, kind of like a plus sign. And we're gonna add that all the way down to the base and give those pipe cleaners two or three tight, tight twists. So we've just added our first two cruffles. We're going to follow this exact same method throughout the remaining sets of ties here on our paint stir stick. I'm always going to add the white cruffle first and then I'll alternate back and forth between the dark and the light shades of pink until we've got all of our cruffles added in. Okay, I've got all of my deco mesh pieces loaded into the swag base and you guys, look how full this beauty is. This is a good time for me to mention to you that not only does this make an excellent door swag, but it's also a great centerpiece or a fireplace mantle centerpiece. Super stinking cute. At this point, if you'd like some measurements, this guy is about 24 inches in length and probably 10 inches in depth at its deepest point. Let's move on to the next step, which is to make our bow. Okay, so let me show you the different ribbon types that we'll be using. Again, this is just a recipe, so certainly make it as you wish. I just recommend that whatever types of ribbon you use, as many or as few as you like, always use wired ribbon. It holds its shape better. So I've got a two and a half inch flamingo, and then three different one and a half inch that I'll coordinate. You also need your scissors handy and a couple of pipe cleaners. So let's get our pipe cleaners prepped. And because this, this swag is so thick, we're going to need a little bit longer of a pipe cleaner. So we're going to marry two together to give us that longer pipe cleaner. So I'm just overlapping them into an X pattern near the top so that we've got about, oh, an inch and a half of each and we're just going to twist them around one another. That way we've got a long enough pipe cleaner that we can tie our bow and anchor it into our swag. Perfect. So once you've created that longer pipe cleaner, just fold that into a loose V and set it off to the side. Okay, let's make our bow. I'm going to use a standard ruler here for measurement purposes. We're going to start out with an eight inch tail. So I'm going to come out to the eight inch mark and guys, definitely not looking for perfection. I'm gonna pinch that ribbon at the eight inch mark. My left hand will be my holding hand, my right hand, my working hand. I'm gonna give that a hard twist because we always want that to be pretty side out. We're gonna measure another eight inch strip and then we'll pinch our ribbon. Once we fold this over, it's going to become a four inch loop. So I'm gonna fold that over underneath my hand. We'll give it a hard twist. Measure out another eight inches. Pinch our ribbon. Fold that over under our thumb. Measure out eight inches. And we'll cut off our tail. All right, let's move on to the next ribbon choice. Now we're going to use our one and a half inch leafy green. This time we're going to measure out a six inch tail. So I've measured out to six inches. I'm gonna place that underneath my hand and give that ribbon a hard twist. We'll measure out 
to six inches again to give us a three inch loop. I'm pinching at that six inch mark and folding it underneath my thumb. We're gonna do that same thing again. Folding underneath my thumb. We're gonna make four loops of this. And guys, your bow's not gonna be pretty at first, that's okay. We're gonna build it first and fluff it second. We'll come out to that six inch mark again. Fold that underneath our thumb and we'll make a six inch tail and cut that guy off. We're gonna move on to our hot pink polka dot ribbon. This will also be six and six, so a six inch tail, pinch that ribbon, place that in our holding hand, measure out to six inches for our three inch loop. Oops. Fold that underneath our hand, give that ribbon a hard twist so that we've got that pretty side always out. And lastly, our six inch tail. Okay, we've got one more ribbon type, and that is this Cutie Patootie Flamingo. So again, six inches, pinch that ribbon, place that underneath our hand, give it a hard twist. And I'm just gonna make a little bitty button loop is what I call it. We're gonna measure out that tail at six inches and cut it off. Now we're going to keep that hand held tight. We're going to wrap this pipe cleaner all the way around this bow stack. Don't worry about messing it up. We're going to fluff this out. So around the center of those ribbons and now I'm going to twist my pipe cleaners tight, tight, tight several times. Okay, so now we've got this hot mess of a bow, but don't worry guys, we're gonna make it cute. Let's bring our swag back into our work area, and we're gonna add this bow right to the middle of our swag. So now that I'm looking at this, I feel like we've got those colors coordinated a little bit too perfectly, and it's going to wash out the bow. So let me grab some black here. This is just a three quarter inch Wiz polka dot. And I'm going to cut two strips at 15 inches to add to the back of our bow just to help it pop and not drown out. So what I'm going to do is just turn this into an X. We'll place that at the very underside of our bow here. And we'll take those pipe cleaners and twist them nicely around that Swiss polka dot. And that's gonna help it pop once we fluff this bow out. Oh yes, that's definitely gonna give it a lot more character. Okay, so when you're gonna add this to the middle, it can be tricky to find, guys, because we've loaded it with so much deco mesh. So if you flip it over, you know that that middle set of two is basically the center of your door swag. And so I'm just gonna take these ties that were on the side and make sure they're pointed towards the side going away from the center. And then we're gonna add this guy down in. So you're gonna have to give yourself some grace and just weave this guy through. And then you'll just twist those ties together on the back side of your swag tightly so it's nice and secure. Okay, let's go ahead and fluff out our bow. I'm going to start at the bottom side of the bow to open up those loops and maneuver those tails so they're laying where I want them to. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to grab my scissors and angle trim all the ends of my ribbon tails. And then I'm just gonna run my fingers up and over those ribbons to give them a cute little curvy bump. So straight to the ceiling and back down. Okay, so now we need to make some ribbon tails to add into some of the other ties. So for the tails, we're just going to use, we'll use all the ribbons except for the two and a half inch. We're going to use the black and white polka dot with the leaf on two sets of the ties. 
And then we'll use the polka dot, the pink polka dot and the flamingo on six sets of the ties. So we're going to need six pieces of the polka dot and the flamingo and two pieces each of the black and white and the leaf. And we're going to measure those at 12 inches in length. So go ahead and cut your ribbon strips at 12 inches in length, angle trim your ends, and then I'll meet you back here. All right, I've got all of my ribbon tails cut and the ends are trimmed, so it's time to load our wreath. We're going to do the bottom half together and then we'll speed ahead for the top half. So on the bottom two sets of ties, we're going to use the pink and the flamingo combination. So we're gonna just lay one ribbon right on top of the other. We'll fold that in half to identify the center. You're welcome to measure if that's your preference. We're gonna pinch and pleat in the middle and then fold that into a loose V over our thumb. Then we're going to come into our set of ties or pipe cleaners. We're gonna press that ribbon tail bundle all the way down to the base and then give those pipe cleaners three or four tight, tight twists. Then we'll trim off the excess bits of pipe cleaner. We'll just poke them back and out of the way and fluff out those tails. How stinking cute is that, you guys? Oh my goodness. You know, this is one of the ones that would be super cute on my door. <laughs> okay, let's do the same thing on the opposite side. We're gonna layer one on top of the other. We'll fold those guys in half to find the center. We'll pinch and pleat in the middle. Fold it into a loose V over our thumb. Come over to the other side and open those pipe cleaners into a wide V. Place those tails all the way down to the base and give our pipe cleaners two or three tight, tight twists. Then we're gonna trim off those excess bits of pipe cleaners with our little snips here. We'll curl that tail out of the way, or that nub, I should say. And we're gonna fluff out those tails. Oh my goodness, you guys. So stinking cute. Okay, so we've got those tails added in. Now let's move to the middle section here. This time we're going to use our one and a half leafy green with our black and white Swiss dot. Layering them one on top of the other, folding it in half to find that middle. Pinching and pleating. Then we're gonna to come to that center set of pipe cleaner ties. You'll have to kind of lift your bow up a little bit. Open those pipe cleaners into a white V. Place that ribbon tail stack all the way down to the base and, you guessed it, trim off those excess bits of pipe cleaners. Take your fingers and curl those guys under and out of the way. And then we're just going to fluff this into an X. Just a loose X underneath all the prettiness of our bow. How stinking cute, guys. All right, we're gonna repeat this exact same thing on the top, and then I'll meet you back here. You guys, look how stinking cute this has come together. Oh my goodness. Okay, we've got just one more step. So our next step is to add just a little bit of greenery to really give the swag some pop and to tie in with our greenery ribbon. This bush actually comes from Hobby Lobby. Just a quick note on florals, guys. Quality definitely matters with florals. So I'm very picky about where I get them. I basically only get my florals uh, from a couple of places with Hobby Lobby um, definitely being the best quality. In my opinion, I'm not sponsored by them. It's just truly what I think. Uh, but at any rate, this is just a long viney bush from Hobby Lobby. And as you can see, it's got like little fingerlings of greenery. And we're going to add one little fingerling of greenery 
in the center of every single set of our ribbon ties and one little sprout right in the center of our bow. So I'm just going to cut off nine of these pieces and then we're going to hot glue them in. Let's do two together and then we'll zoom ahead. So you're just going to take your greenery bit, whatever type you choose. You want that stem to be about a half to a quarter of an inch long. You're just going to run a little bit of glue right along that stem. You'll come into your swag and nestle that guy right down into the center of each set of ribbon tails. And we'll do the one in the center of the bow together here in just a moment. I'm just going to hold it for about 10 seconds to give it time to grab. And so with our bow, guys, I'm just going to nestle it right down in the middle. Just like that. All right, let's take a couple of minutes and add one greenery bit to the center of each of our ribbon tails. I'm going to meet you back here. Oh my goodness, this beauty is finished. Let's hang it on a door and see how it looks. How adorable did this turn out? I'm so happy with it, and I can't wait to gift my friend with our swag. Thanks for spending time crafting with me today, friends. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button.